Hello there and welcome to School of the Spirit discussing matters concerning the things of the Spirit. I welcome you once again and if you're new, please do well to subscribe. Trust me, you'll have many, many contents that you will come across that will really bless you and edify you. So if you are concerned about spiritual things, you want to know the Holy Spirit, you want to learn God's divine communication modes, you want to understand how to walk the path of the Spirit and spiritual matters, then be my guest and be sure that you are the right spot. Uh, we started a series on the spirit of revelation and this will be about the third path. Um, and I felt to further extend it because I wanted us to isolate one of the things we discussed in the last episode and talk about it today because I felt it's very um, strategic to our growth and very essential as far as um, the area of revelation is um, concerned. You know, revelation is one of God's communicative um, procedures to his people. Everything that God shows or reveals to us he does through the platform of revelation and the holy spirit is called the spirit of revelation ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 tells us that god the father will grant unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him and i told you the last time that revelation means to disclose a disclosure it means to unveil something that is hidden, to cause or to make to manifest. And the job of the Holy Spirit is to reveal to us all that concerns the Father, which has been encapsulated and embodied in the Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 14 and 15, that he would take of what is mine and show it to you. And he said, all things that the Father has are mine. In other words, all of the mystery around God, who is God, where is he, what does he do, his ways, his nature, his character, all of that has been revealed um, and personified in Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit, now that Jesus is no longer on earth, it's the assignment of the Holy Spirit to bring to the revelation of the believer, to the understanding of the believer and the church, revelations of Jesus Christ. Because the church is the body of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus, who is the head of the church, is revealed to the church, the church finds her identity in the revelation of Jesus Christ. So the revelation of Jesus to us by the Holy Spirit is the communication of our identity to us. And these are some of the reasons why we need the spirit of revelation. I told you the last time some of the ways by which the spirit of revelation works in our lives to bring us disclosures of divine secrets. Number one, I said dreams and visions. And then I said knowings of the spirit, spiritual knowings or what we call uh, the knowing of revelation. And I just want us to talk a little bit further about the knowing of revelation because as per my experience and as it is supposed to be, every believer has this um, operational in their lives one way or the other this aspect of the spirit of revelation manifests even in our daily life and it's important that we understand it because i realize that most of god's divine communication are revealed to us on the platform of spiritual knowings or the knowings of revelation now the knowings of revelations are simply a knowledge that you receive, not that you were taught or that you learned, but you just receive it in its wholesome and complete state. Think of it. Knowledge generally is due to logic and reasoning. It's subjected to logic and reasoning. Every body of knowledge you come across um, is logical in, 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 in its nature. But we are talking about a knowledge that is not logical. We are talking about a knowledge that is visual. A knowledge that is complete. 
a knowledge that is not learned or that is not taught using the human teaching procedures. Now, the Holy Spirit furnishes this knowledge in your heart because this is the truth. That knowledge is truth. And so, when that knowledge is furnished in your heart, you have no reason to doubt that this is of God. And I'll give you some instances from Scripture. Let's read Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and we present us with you. So the action of believing and speaking is based on an inner knowing. And this knowing is that God who raised Jesus up will raise us up with him. In other words, the life that we have is powered by the same facility that sponsored the resurrection of Jesus. The life that we have is sponsored by the dynamics, the mystery of revelation. Jesus didn't resurrect by himself. He was raised up by the glory of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. You see that in Romans chapter 6 verse 4. And so it's the same way that God will cause us to walk in this new life. Everything we do will be sustained and empowered by the life that comes from the Holy Spirit. That life that was manifested as the power of resurrection. So the reason why we believe and we speak is because the spirit of faith that is in us has um, has furnished in us a knowing that God who raised up Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us. So that's the reason why we are able to go through afflictions. We are able to go through persecutions. We are able to go through even near-death situations because we know that there is a power of resurrection that is at work and alive in our bodies. This knowledge is not taught. This knowledge is not learned. It is furnished by the spirit of revelation. When you meet people, there's something in you that just makes you feel that you, you've you known them. You just have this, some call it instinct, some call it nudge. We have all names for it. But you just have a resolute idea of who these people are. And this is not an idea that is from your mind. It just comes from within you. And that's right. Because the Bible says that out of the heart comes the issues of life. This is not just from your mind. Your mind is still finite. But your heart in itself cannot be exhausted. Because that's the core aspect of your being. So... The Spirit of God furnishes that knowledge, that reality in your heart. And so you just know them. For instance, you can meet people for the first time and just know you are going to work with them for a long time. You can meet somebody for the first time and know this person will be my employee. I will employ this person. Or you can meet, you can go into a church for the first time and know this is my place. The same way you can meet people and know there's no way I'm doing business with this person. I don't, I don't have facts to prove it, but this person is fraudulent. There's something fishy about this person. If you found yourself experiencing any of these instances, you are experiencing life, what we call the knowing of revelation. And it is furnished by the Spirit of God Himself, who is the Spirit of revelation. More scriptures. John chapter 13. Find this happening in the life of Jesus. John chapter 13 from verse 1 to 3. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Verse 3 says, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God. First of all, in verse 1, Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should die. 
And then in verse 3, Jesus knew that the Father had given all things into his hand. He also knew that he had come from God and was going to God. All of these knowledges or knowledge were resolute truths furnished in him by the Holy Spirit. So Jesus had this knowing about his purpose. He knew where he was going to. And that was what orchestrated the actions that you find later on in that chapter. And everything he began to tell them. Most times Jesus will speak to his audience, especially when he talks about how he will suffer persecution and he will be killed. He spoke as if he knew the future. And it's true. When the knowing of revelation works in your life, you can know the future. You can predict the future and be accurate about it. This is not stock market prediction. This is not some Wall Street prediction. No. This is not a, 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 a 50-50 logical reasoning business kind of prediction. No. This is a prediction that is based on truth, not just facts. Truth. It's called the knowing of revelation. If you master the knowing of revelation as a believer, you will always walk in accurate divine direction. In fact, many times, if we are sensitive enough, many times that bad things happen to us, somehow we knew something was off before the time. But you see, then again, as human beings, we mostly play the responsibility of decision making. We leave it to our minds. And the Bible said it is out of the heart that the issues of life come from, not the mind. In fact, for as a man thinketh in his heart, not his mind, his heart. You see, Apostle, are you saying that you can't think? Of course you can think with your mind, but in the context of that scripture, it was not talking about thinking with your mind. It was talking about the process of meditation and how it fabricates your being and Everything that becomes your outcome. It's called the knowing of revelation. I'll give you more examples of Jesus in the Gospels. Here is Jesus in Matthew chapter 9 verse 4. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your heart? So this was the story of Jesus when he met the man who was paralyzed. And Jesus says, son, your sin is forgiven you. And then they, they began to murmur within themselves. Who gives this man power to forgive sin? And then Jesus, knowing. There's no way you can know the thoughts of a man. First Corinthians 2 verses 10 says, 11 rather says, No man can know the things of a man, saves the spirit of the man that is in him. Even so, no man can know the things of God, save the spirit of God. So the only way to know the thoughts of people is through the knowing of revelation where the Holy Spirit furnishes what they are thinking and puts it in their heart. You need this kind of manifestation in a world filled with wickedness. The Bible says, in fact, the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. It says no one can fathom it. You can't tell that you are with somebody who is going to be a traitor tomorrow, but appear the nicest. A lot of people employ all kinds of strategies to just know about the people around them. You can know about people using all kinds of human strategies. But if you want to know people, then you need the spirit of revelation to furnish the knowing of revelation. I'll give you an exercise as I bring this episode to a close. I want you, as you go out on a daily basis, when you meet people, or when you are in a situation, try to ask the Holy Spirit within you about that situation or about this individual and wait for the answer. He, most likely, this is what you will experience. It will be like you thinking a question and also thinking the answer to that question. If you experience that, then my friend, you are walking in the knowing of revelation. Use that to guard your decisions in all that you do. So you'll have to be patient 
to wait for that knowing to be furnished in your heart. The reason why the knowing of revelation is highly essential to every believer is because not every believer has their other senses, spiritual senses, opened or exercised. Some can see and can't hear in the spirit. Some can hear and can't see in the spirit. But every believer has the knowing of revelation. And I tell you, it's one of the most powerful and accurate way of finding the truth in anything. Let me know at the comment section how this has blessed you. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.